So the second Corinthians chapter four, starting in verse one. <clears throat> Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy. How many know you've received mercy? Amen. How many know if you got what you deserved, none of us would deserve to be here? Yeah. I don't know about you. I don't know how you were before, but I know none of us deserved what we had, but I'm so thankful for the mercy that God has given us. Amen. We faint not. I remember he's got me, so I'm not going to faint. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Do you know I see it all in the church world anymore. I see it all kinds of places. Listen, the Bible says a liar will not inherit heaven. Do you know how you, if you a, a partial a partial truth is a whole lie? Did you know that? Yes. But I deal with people all the time. Did you? Know that I've just seen just increpid of lying across the board. Out of abundance of heart, the mouth speaks. Right? Now, a lot of times people lie because they think it's the easier way out. Somebody didn't teach them very well as a kid, you know. If you've got to, if you tell a lie, you've got to remember all that lie and keep that guy lie going. That's a lot of work, man. Right? Yes. Even if you tell a partial truth, well, I withheld it for their own good. If I ask you a direct question, I promise you I already know the answer. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see if you're going to be honest with me. Y'all with me? So they have renounced the things of dishonesty. So that means you have a choice whether you're honest or not. Come on. Well, I don't know any better. You liar. <laughs> They ate of the tree of good and evil in the garden. Everybody knows better now. Unfortunately, they got us cursed. Us men that were going to work by the sweat of our brow. You women get to have childbirth. Yay. <laughs> but thankfully, there was a second Adam who came and redeemed us and took us back out underneath of that. He didn't, he didn't come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law and give us grace and mercy and help us to overcome so that we could do the law. Y'all still with me? Okay. So you have a choice in whether or not you're honest. Not walking in craftiness. Everybody you know has got something up their sleeve at this day and time. Everybody's working an angle. And you think that's a new thing. You know what? I can't control everybody else working their angles. I can just make sure I'm not working one. And when I do that, what's it do? It sets me up for the blessings of God. Come on, that I talked about. Me. How many want the blessings of God? Amen. Then you're going to have to not walk in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. My, now he's talking to people that are supposed to be believers. Wowzers. I thought we were just talking about them hoodlums on the street. <laughs> He's not. Lots of people are using the word of God, but they just twist a little there, pervert a little here. If your flesh has any hand in the word, you've deceitfully used it. Come on. If your flesh has any hand in the way that you talk to the word, you've deceitfully used it. You ought to be scared to death when you start quoting scriptures that you're getting it right. Why? Not because you, because who, look, Ananias and Sapphira, they went there. We talk about tithes and offerings, you know. They didn't even have to give any, but then they lied about how they were doing it. They did it dishonestly. They got strike dead right there. Dead. New Testament, by the way, that wasn't even Old Testament. But like, that stuff don't happen in the New Testament. I'm like, which book do you read? <laughs> God doesn't do that no more. We're under new grace. Tell him that's his plan. Come on. Dishonestly, deceitfully use the word of God. So, what 
are you telling me to let preacher? I already got issues with preachers in church. Well, then know the word of God so you'll know when you're in a good one. Amen. You'll never hear me complain if you come ask me a question about a sermon I have preached or if you ask me for scripture. Matter of fact, if I don't give you scripture, you should come and ask. Matter of fact, you shouldn't listen to somebody that's not giving you plenty of scripture. Amen. And they don't, and if they got to take a piece here and a piece there to make it work, they're deceitfully using it. You won't offend me, but just be ready that because I, I don't preach nothing I've not done research on. So just be ready for the book I'm about to hand to you on the subject. <laughs> How many can attest to that? Yeah. All right. Let's get to the good stuff. Enough cleaning house. But by manifestation of the truth, convincing to every man's conscience in the sight of the God. So, if you really believe that Jesus is in you, First John four four, wouldn't you walk and talk different? The Bible says light and darkness cannot inhabit the same space. Listen, I believe in holiness. I believe in sanctification. I also believe that I can't do it within my own self. I'm so thank thankful that he says that his grace is sufficient. In my weakness, his strength is made perfect. I know I'm not perfect. I know I've got weaknesses. But I'm so thankful I can go to the Father. And the Holy Ghost can come and empower me to change. He can put his super to my natural and I can change. But I have to, the Bible says if we examine ourselves, we won't have to be examined by God. How many would rather examine yourself this morning than have God show up and say, we're going to take care of some stuff today. Because he will, because not because he's mad, but because any good father that loves you corrects you. If my kid was up here this morning, he was running up and down through the pair of scissors, or if he was back when he was three or four years old, what kind of dad would you think me to be if I kept letting him do that? And you think God's just going to let you keep running around to injure yourself repeatedly without doing something to try to stop you? Come on. So let's go on. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You ain't doing nobody. No, I'm just living my life. I let them see. My, hopefully they see my life at work. I don't talk about it though. I don't share Jesus. No, 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 sir. Not at all. They see my life, preacher. They know I'm a good person. Man, if you hid your light, Christ is hid. And he's the hope of the world. You want to know why the world's in the shape it is? Because ain't nobody got their light really shining. I don't want to talk about that preacher. They're going, you know what they're going to do to me? You know what they did to him? Yeah, they might do something to you. That's right. Sorry, I ain't going to sugarcoat it. You may get some backlash. You may get some stuff. And you just might save somebody's soul and save them from hell. Amen. And you just may just get to share the joy with them that you have. Come on, don't be, you know, in charismatic movements, I, I, I pray we get to have an altar call today. I pray the glory of God just flows through here and the freedom of God just flows in a powerful way. But if you suck it all up and don't take it out to the highways and byways, you're not doing it right. He's going to say, why should I keep pouring my spirit out on them? Stingy folk. <laughs> Greedy. Come on. Well, somebody has shut me down. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And then the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. I mean, oh, they're blinded. Yeah. Why are they this way? Why are they that way? Well, I have a saying. I have lots of sayings. Someday somebody's going to publish a book, I'm sure. <laughs> But why are you mad at lost people for acting like lost people? Why are you mad at lost people for acting like lost people? You keep acting them to expect them to act like you do and how you see it in the Word. 
They ain't going to act that way. They're blind as a bat. They don't know nothing until you show them and expose them. You got a dark line. They're stumbling around in the dark until you turn your light up so bright that it shocks them awake. They can't see. But you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to keep fueling yourself up. To, so listen, you, anybody can tell you, it's this way at work. They're that way. They're this way. Well, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm afraid to open my mouth. They'll get me next. <laughs> Man, you better open your mouth. You better get prayed up in the Holy Ghost. You better turn that light up so high it makes them uncomfortable. You know what happens when the light gets bright? The rats run. <laughs> they either get right or get gone. I promise you. I know I say this a lot, and I just use it for an example. Go to a restaurant with me sometime. I promise you. It's one of the craziest things you'll ever see. Either people will be drawn to me or I clear out the whole place. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? <laughs> Because the anointing breaks the yoke. What's in me shouldn't just be here at the church. It should go with me everywhere I go. I promise you I'm the same in the church and the church came. I was the same and same with the guy that tried to take out the church fan with the kids in it. I did catch up to him. He got his license plate. He's the first person I ever called the cops on. Because he almost killed all that bustle of the kids, put his trailer into it. I had to lock it up and throw him in there. But you know what? After I called the cops and reported him so they would deal with him, because that's not me, my character. But then I started praying for him, man. And I'm still praying for him. I thought, man, you just got on the biggest red hit list you've ever seen, buddy. <laughs> you will be saved. I'm going to see you. You're going to, I know you've seen the side of that church, man. I'm expecting him to walk in here soon and say, preacher, I repent. We're trying to kill them kids. Yes, amen. But God protected them, parents. I, I, they probably didn't even realize it was severe as what it was. But I don't know. They all stayed in their seats, I think. Yeah. All right, moving along. Blind in the minds of them which, which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel is the image of God should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves. Come on. It's not about you. Who gets the glory? God. Jesus. So if we, he'll be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him, right? Come on. If he'll be lifted up, did he say he might? No. Did he say he could? No. He said he will. Why ain't we having the move of God, preacher? Why isn't anybody getting saved? Matt, are we lifting him up? No, I don't have a hard enough time at work. I ain't getting an X pill on my back. Well, if you deny him before men, he'll deny you before his father. Woo, that ought to wake you up. Come on. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you what it says. I want you to wake up. I want you to decide when you leave here today, you can have the promises of God. Oh, when we talked about hard times Wednesday, I know a bunch of you are still in hard times. You want to get out of hard out of hard times? Start shining bright. Make the racks in your life run. Start, but then you're going to have to start speaking with your mouth. We're about to get there. Yes. Well, I've been speaking with my mouth. Well, who told you to shut up? Did your mountain move yet? He said, if you, they that speak, say unto the mountain, that shall be removed and cast into the sea. Mark chapter 11. He didn't say those that said. I'll say it again. Some of you didn't quite get it. He didn't say those that said. He said those that say. It's an ongoing process. Yes. Huh. I don't know how much longer I can stay down <laughs> But preach Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves and your servants be Jesus' sake. For God who commended the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts. First John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. There's no drug, no alcohol, no, no, no situation, no anything that's not better than the good news of Jesus Christ. There's nothing the good news can't overcome. 
You may have to change some things in your life to line up. Come on. Listen, this is Broken Chains Church, Luke 4, 18. He came to set the captives free. Come on. Amen. He came to preach deliverance. That's the reason because you have a choice in deliverance. If you want to get, some people like playing with their demons too much to get rid of. I'm just telling you the truth. But anytime you finally get tired and your pain level gets high enough, you can come to the altar and the anointing breaks the yoke and they'll be gone. He came to heal the brokenhearted. There's still a bomb in Gilead. You can have them. But here's the other thing. Quit blaming demons because you don't want to work on your character. Because you don't want to crucify your flesh. Satan didn't have nothing to do with it. You did it because you wanted to. You didn't want to line up the word of God. You just wanted to have it your way. <laughs> and you keep having it your way as long as you want till you get miserable of it. But why do all that when you can have the good stuff? You can have the good life. You can have joy. I thought you said we were going to go through stuff. Yeah, I didn't sugarcoat it to you. But man, is it worth it? Absolutely. You can have it. I want to get to where some of you are at in just a minute. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Listen, when you start letting your light shine, people start getting an understanding of who Jesus is. Sometimes they see it when you're going through some of the hardest times of your life. Come on. But you got to keep your faith. The enemy came to wear you out. That's what he came to do. Wear out the saints. Well, I'm wore out with him trying to wear you out. I've been through a lot. I'm still going through a lot. I've had some even newer things propped up, up in my body. I'm resisting. But God is faithful. Yes. And guess what? I'm still here and I'm still preaching. He thought he had me dead 10 years ago. And he's trying to kill me a different way every other year. I'm not exaggerating. Ask around. But my God is faithful. Yes. And here's what I've decided in my mind. He wants a war. He's got one. And if you think I'm saying it for the first time, hang around and go watch some stuff back. But how about I'm ready to get you all on fire so we can go get the rest of Springfield on fire? Yeah. Not that you're not, but we're going to have to change our mindsets from what we're facing to what we're overcoming. There's a difference. If you're facing it, Okay. But when you realize you're overcoming it, that's when things start to change. And notice it's overcoming, not overcame. Because you may still be in the process. Amen. <laughs> One of my favorite verses in the Bible is verse 7. Verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And he could have put his best stuff anywhere in the world and he put it in you and me. Woo! Man, you got something the world needs and you got the best that God has. He's got treasure inside each one of you. That nobody, you can do things that nobody else can do. You can reach people that nobody else can. He said he made captivity captive. He gave gifts unto men. Gifts aren't operating because people don't want to clean up the house. They don't want to get enough gas to operate them. Because it takes holiness. It takes a disciple life. It takes a completely soul out to God. If you want to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But people don't want to sell out. They don't want to clean up. And, and they don't want to stay it that way. Some people get enough gas to do it here and do it there. But listen, a little spark, a little can here and there, don't do it. you got to operate in it all the time. Come on. I remember when we were kids and we used to have say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, listen, God's not looking for a little candy light. He's looking for a bonfire. 
He's looking for people that set you on fire and people come to watch you burn. Well, I'm going through some stuff. Man, we're about to get to that. He addressed that even in this very verse. But you've got to realize, you've got to believe with everything that's within you that God put a treasure inside you, that, that it, you're worth what he paid for you. He paid the ultimate price. He bought, you're bought with a price. He put the most, the thing he treasured up on this earth was your soul. And he paid for it with his life and with his blood so that you can walk free, live free, and share that with everybody around you. <laughs> we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency may be of God and not of us. Who gets the glory? Who did it? God. God. Now he, he gets to it right here. So this is the one everybody quotes. We are troubled on every side. Oh, <laughs> Satan's been after me. You know what I think of when I read this verse? I think of Elijah. <clears throat> he had his young prophet. And they were surrounded. All of the armies were around them. There was no way out. <laughs> And Elijah's just sitting there, <laughs> kicked back, <laughs> enjoying. He drank coffee back then. He drank a cup of coffee. Man. He just having a good time. And his young prophet is like wigging out, man. He's like, well, "What do you do? Something called fire down from heaven? I don't know, but they're about to kill us all." And he's like, well, "Would you chill out?" If, he didn't quite say it this way. I'm paraphrasing. If God be for us. Who can be against us? He didn't say it there. It's in the New Testament, I know. But, you know, that's pretty much the, what he said. And the prophet, he said, just go look and see who's for us. And the prophet's like, he's crazy. He's lost it. You prophet. He's like, fine, I will go and look. So he went and looked and he didn't see nobody. Ain't that how we do it today? Fine, God, I will believe your word. Look, I did it. Nothing happened. Come on. And the prophet is still sitting there, Elijah still sitting there chilling. Lord, open his eyes. Lord, open his eyes. Some of you need to ask the Lord this morning, Lord, open my eyes. That I can see that greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. See, he went back that time and he saw legions of warring angels. They were way greater than what the ones who were assembled against him. And when he saw them, he's like, okay, it's over. It's done. God's got this. Some of you need to have your eyes open today because you believe believed the lie that Satan's bigger than your thing. And some of you, you made some dumb choices. Is God bigger than a dumb choice? Yes. Romans 8, 28 says, All things work together for good and love God that are called according to his purpose. I touched this on this Wednesday. Whose purpose? God's purpose, not your purpose. Quit getting try God to try to bless your mess and figure out what his purpose is. Figure out what his plan is. He loves you. And then, but he can, the thing I figured out, as long as I come back to him, repent it in my heart, and, and come back to him, I teach I tell him this to watch Wednesday if you want more of it. But uh he'll make anything right as long as I get my heart right. Right. May not go the way I planned, but it'll go good plan. Y'all still here? Yes. All right. So we have this treasure on earth and vessels. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. See, when you see who's for you, you don't get stressed. Some of you need to realize who's for you, who's fighting for you. You need God to open your eyes. Y'all still here? Yes. We are perplexed, and that word perplexed, I want to stop there for a minute. I mean, most of you kind of, you kind of have an idea of what perplexed means, right? I just don't understand. I don't know why it's so. Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. Thayer's definition is to... Uh, to be without resources. Wow. To be without resources. To be in straits. That means you're locked into a place you can't see a way out of. You know what a rut is, don't you? 
It's a grave with both ends dug out of it. If you stay there, you're going to die. You better be ready to get fight and get to it. Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. Come on. You're perplexed. You're in the straits. You can't see a way out. Okay. Who's your God? What do you got in you? Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Yes. To be left wanting. You're like, anybody ever like, well, that's it? That's all there is? I'm perplexed, God. I thought there'd be more. Oh, you're telling me the guy that made heaven and earth how to do my job. Right? Come on. You're going to be perplexed. It's, it's part of it. You're not always going to have it all figured out. But that doesn't make God's word any less true. Or that not doesn't mean, and, and actually that's when you need to start relying on it even more and walking it out by faith. Just make sure whatever you're trying to make happen, well, I mean, actually, if you're trying to make it happen, just stop. It's not God anyways. If you've got to make something happen, it's not of God. I'll just save you the effort. The Bible says, let the peace of God rule your heart and mind. Where his peace goes, you go. When you stop getting his peace, you stop going. If you ain't got no peace, don't do it. If you got to make it happen, you know, I, I, I learned that a long time ago. You know, come on, his yoke is easy, his burden is light. Now, even when he makes it happen, he doesn't always show you the way. I mean, come on, we, we, uh, we've been through a lot in the, in the 15 years as a church. Uh, we've overcome all kinds of obstacles. We, we, God's blessed us. We've had to do all kinds of things. It's been my faith every step of the way. <laughs> And I have been perplexed more times than I can count on how God was going to do something, but not one time did he ever fail me. No. Now, did he always do it the way I thought he was going to? Absolutely not. <laughs> Matter of fact, I don't even suggest anything to him anymore. I just tell him the need, I speak it out loud, I stand in faith, and I let him decide how and when he's going to do, and I don't change my mind that he's going to do it. I just make sure the thing I'm doing was from God. What about your healing, Pastor? Same deal. Resist the devil and he shall flee. By his stripes I was healed. Past tense. Finished at the cross. He already made an open show of Satan. He ain't got to do it again. No. Then why are you resisting stuff? Because the devil's a chunk. I mean, come on. He attacked one of the people serving Jesus after he came back from revival. So who was that? He was brother in law. And God had to speak to that healing. So if he was could do it then, he's probably going to do it now. But the same God that healed him then heals us now. So come on, quit trying to, you know. It's funny. Everybody got something to say when it's you. Come on, are you with me? You just got to know there's power in you and it works. To be in doubt. Well, the Bible says if you don't have any faith, God hates you. Well, that's true. But doubt isn't always the same as having no faith. There was a man in the Bible who came to Jesus and he said, Lord, help thou when I unbelieve. I mean, it takes a lot of faith to go to Jesus and ask him to help you with your unbelief. There's times we're going to struggle with. I just don't know if that is what it is. But if you'll go to him, so he'll put his super to your natural and help you in your weakness to believe. Isn't that good news? You're not always super faith kingdom thing. You know, there's lots of people talk about faith. I, I'm a faith uh, uh, believing person. I believe in, in the gift of faith. I believe it's a powerful thing. But I'm also not the confession police. But I do believe you need to watch what you confess. But you know, I know lots of people that have all the confessions right, and their hearts are screwed up. They still ain't doing no good. Because you need to work on your heart before you work on your confession. You need to work on your confession. But if your heart ain't right, they'll know none of it matters. If you don't believe that God is who he says he is, I don't know that matter either. Boy, I'm preaching this morning. <laughs> it's for somebody over there. So to be perplexed means to be in doubt. Aren't you glad it's in the Bible that God tells you what to do if you're having a hard time? Well, I don't know if that's true, preacher. Well, you know what? I don't know if I can convince you either, but I know the God that can help 
You know, I figured out a long time ago, I'm probably not going to convince you by talking. I don't do a lot of talking, but I do do a lot of praying. And I watch prayer change things all the time. And people that's on my leadership team can attest to it. I might speak, we got to pray about this, this, and this, and that'll be the last you hear. And all of a sudden, you'll see something. And if I am talking to you, it's because I done spent months in prayer about it. Moving on. Not to know which way to turn. Anybody ever not quite know what, what the next step was? You're a little perplexed? The Bible says the steps of the righteous man are ordered of the Lord. So if you know it, you can believe it. You just got to get it. But it's okay sometimes if you're perplexed. You know? My flesh man wants to move to the mountain. The Lord tells my spirit man to stay here. I'm a little perplexed in why he put that in there. <laughs> I'm staying here. Just telling you sometimes <laughs> I'm a mountain man stuck in the corn pits. Come on, man. Is that not perplexing? <laughs> to be in the loss with oneself, to be in doubt. Not to know how to decide or what to do. Everybody in this room in here is a little perplexed about something. I just want to tell you now about the Spirit of God. But I also came to tell you that all the other things we read this morning are true. And you need to realize you have a treasure inside you that you need to start tapping into. And you need God to open your eyes to see that greater is he that's with you than those that are against you. Come on, are you still here today? <coughs> God, I've enjoyed this paper thing the last few weeks. It's almost like old times. <laughs> we are, I got seven minutes. Y'all calm down. <laughs> We are perplexed, but not in despair. Despair, another word for despair is hopelessness. When you really don't believe there's any way out or any way through anymore. Come on, God is the God of hope. Romans 15, 13. So he is the God of hope. He'll fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. If you believe. Do you believe this morning? Yes. yes. If you do, he'll fill you with joy and peace. He'll fill you with hope. That word hope, mostly some of you can quote it. You're like, preacher, you've said this a million times. That word hope means confidently, come on, you know it, say it with me. Confidently, deadly, anticipating that the promises of God are yes and amen. amen. It ain't some wishy-washy hope from the world. I'm confidently anticipating. I'm looking. I'm waiting. It's coming around the corner any minute. It's going to pop. I can't wait till it gets here. Woo! And I told you about what I'm getting today. It's coming. I'm reaching over into the unseen realm by faith, and I'm pulling it over here. I've got hope. I'm expecting it. It's because the promises of God are yes and amen. God's not a man that he can lie. He said, by his stripes, I was healed. I command this body to come in alignment with the word of God, and I say, be healed in Jesus' name. When was the last time you spoke to your body? When was the last time you spoke to your situation? Someone says, Preacher, I still hear you rebuke and curse things, but I don't do it all ugly and mean, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> There's a death. You know, when somebody's mad doing it, they ain't doing it with the right spirit. Exactly. If I rebuke that, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Some people are like, what did Jesus say? I just smile and keep going. <laughs> I just dealt with that spirit and I rolled on. Why? I'm not trying to hurt the person. <laughs> I just want to get rid of whatever that thing is that's hanging on them. So I can have a conversation with them. <laughs> Come on. Somebody do it, get it more. I don't know where my water is. I can't keep.
keep a hold of it today. Y'all still here? Okay, I'm going to take a drink. Anybody give me five more minutes? Yes. That's 35 right there. <laughs> Persecuted, but not forsaken. Forsaken. God will not ever forsake you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. If it feels like he's gone somewhere, he's not the one that moves. And nobody's punishing you today either for We're just telling you the water's just fine. Come on. Amen. Come on. But you're going to be persecuted for some things in these last days. But come on, remember you. You got this treasure in an earthen vessel. You're not a whipping post. You're a, you're a powerful man and woman of God. Cast down, but not destroyed. He, he might throw me down. It might look like I'm even broken a time or two. But he can't destroy me. He doesn't have the authority. I have the authority of Christ Jesus in me. And I get to say when it's over, and it ain't over. It ain't over until either I'm dead. I, Jesus calls me home, tells me that my spiritual job, my job is done here upon the earth. Or he, I catch him up in the air. And someday he's going to come back and split the eastern sky and I'm going to meet him in the air. Come on. Are you ready to meet him in the air? Yes. We can see the days growing closer. Now, a day with the Lord is a thousand years. I'm not going to try to scare you into getting right. If i got to scare you to do something right, you, then i got to keep you scared all the rest of your Christian life and then you're going to miss out on all the good stuff. Like the joy, the peace, the love of God. But don't be naive. He's coming back. Yeah. The Bible said to look for him every day. Expecting him to come. Why? Because he's not a man that he could lie. He said that he would. Yeah. That was free for somebody in here. Always praying about the body, the, the, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are our way delivered unto the death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in what? Our mortal yeah. body. So, uh, in mortal flesh. So he wants people, he, he wants you to be Jesus with skin on. Let's move on. So then death working in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith. 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 Come on, I'm going to say it again to you. Some of you may have got it yet. We have the same spirit of faith. Come on. He's gave you, I don't know, preacher, you got a lot of faith. I don't know if I got any faith. I don't know if I can believe that. The Bible said he gave every man, man a measure of faith. Every one of you got a five-gallon bucket full of mustard seed. That's what that measure means. But you just haven't started lifting it yet. If you look at a bodybuilder, you know, they can all have, be having the same bucket. But some of them lift it a whole lot faster than others. It just depends on how much you've been lifting it, how much you've been exercising your faith. But we all have the spirit of faith. It's part of the treasure that he put in you. So you need to start activating your faith. You need to start activating that spirit of faith that's inside you. You need to start opening your mouth and start speaking some things into the world. The Bible says your world is, fr your world is framed by your words of faith. I don't like the world I'm living in. Then I would start checking to see what kind of world I'm been speaking out because those kind of things are real because you've got that treasure inside you he just said you've got the same spirit of faith the same spirit of faith of the living God the son of Jesus had when he walked upon the face of the earth the same spirit he gave the disciples when he sent them out going about doing all kinds of miracles and signs and wonders that's the same spirit of faith he was active upon the earth in these last days when he came when he said when I come back will I find the spirit of faith moving upon the earth that only decides upon you and me if we're going to live and be the beings he called us to be. Are you going to activate the spirit of faith inside you? Are you going to start speaking as one with authority? Because you already have it. You just need to activate it. How do I activate it? Well, some of you need to clean up your gas tank. 
big smile. Oh my. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed and therefore I have spoken. What are you speaking? I don't feel good, preacher. You know, listen, in all honesty, it's okay to have real talks with your preacher like that sometimes. Just don't go around saying all that dumb stuff 24-7. Speak to your body. Speak to your mind. I did it, nothing happened. Well, you know, sometimes you gotta mash your car, you pedal a little more, just get up the speed limit too. You don't stop That's mashing right. on it before you get there. That's right. And speak to others the word of God. So we have the same spirit of faith, according to written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. speak. You know, many of you heard me preach on this throughout the years. David didn't run to this giant with his mouth shut. Goliath showed up and was telling him all the things he's going to do to him, the same way your giants do in your life. And Goliath was going, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. He didn't tell him, well, I killed a lion and I killed a bear and I'm going to kill you too. A lot of dumb Christians get that prideful. Come on, we've seen that in the beginning, right? But he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. The same God that was with me with the giant, with the bear, the same God that was with me with the lion, is the same God that's going to be with me when I take you out, the lion. And some of you need to stop speaking to your giants. Well, it don't ever change. Keep speaking. There was a young man. He was in a it was a, it was in a rough way. He uh, he uh, had got married to this young girl, and they had like I don't know four or five kids. And then she left him. And they were in church and doing all kinds of things uh, for the Lord. But how many know just because you do something for the Lord doesn't make it of the Lord? And uh, she left him for her lesbian lover. She had had since uh, she was, uh, they were in high school. And they were together for years. He contacted me and I prayed over him. And God gave the young man a prophetic word, uh, very in detail on what he needed to do. Well, when things didn't go the way that he thought they were, they ended up divorced. Uh, she was living with this other girl. And she was partying, doing all these things. His kids was getting drugged into it. And this young man then got disgusted and fell away from God himself. And uh, I was down home and he was working at a Casey's and I didn't know it. I stopped to get gas. I don't get home very often. This has been many years ago now. And uh, he was working the cash register. I was just as shocked to see him as he was to see me. He started unloading on me of all his issues and problems. And uh, in my typical fashion, I rebuked him and said, who told you to stop believing? Yeah, but this happened and that happened. And I said, no, nobody told you to stop. And God can't do nothing until you get back under his cover again. Do you want to hear the rest of that story? Exactly two weeks after that, he went back to the Lord, got his life all together. Three weeks after that, his wife came back. She's delivered from homosexuality, has a ministry that reaches to them. They still got a lot of growing to do with God. But God restored it all and did exactly what He had said He would do. But, you know, all I did that day was deposit some hope back into Him because nobody said it was over. He just decided it must be over. And some of you decided it's over. And you need to believe, hey, God, if God said it, he's not a man that he can lie, right? Some people say, well, how long are you going to deal with some of the issues I'm dealing with? Between here and heaven, I'm going to be made whole. There's not a doubt about it, but I'm always contending for here. Come on. So this morning, some of you are perplexed. But don't be distressed. If God be for you, who can be against you? 
When was the last time you spoke to your mom? Have you ever spoke to her? So, you know, he didn't say, hey, call for Pastor Brian. Listen, listen I'll pray for you. Oh, and I'm standing in faith with you, I guarantee. But they didn't say call for, put that up there, Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 24, the whole thing, you can't scroll down through it. Nowhere in there does it say call for your pastor. Now, James 5 says, if any be sick among, among you, if any anybody have any illness or have I have any sense that's called for the elders of the church and the, said anointing with the Lord, pray the prayer of faith. And then it says, he shall raise it up. Who's doing the raising up? God. All I got to do is have my gas tank full so he can use me. I believe God's still looking off on the face of the earth to do great things. He just can't hardly find a car with any gas in it. Come on. Your car got gas in it this morning? You want to put some gas in your car? Yes. Nowhere up there does it say, call for your pastor. It says you speak to your mouth. Yes. You say. Quit telling everybody about your mouth. Nobody wants to hear about your mouth anyways. That mouth ain't going to answer to them. It's your mouth. And you've got faith to do it. You've got the spirit of faith. We just saw it. <coughs> well, I don't have to say it, preacher. I can just think it. Um, um, you had to confess to get saved. Do you really think that's how it works? Do you know, I, I, let alone, I have a study I, I sometimes I'll take. Sound is a powerful thing. You'd be amazed at how much sound does in our in our world around us and how much it changes things. And when you speak something, that mountain is set on your frequency. Right, right. Well, I need some scripture for that. Okay, how about we go to a real simple one? The children of Israel were marching around. They had no idea what they were going to do or what God was going to do. They were just being obedient. I mean, they probably acted like fools. The Bible says there was literally hecklers on the wall making fun of them while they marched around for seven days. And they didn't do any great thing other than blow their trumpets. But that frequency, that sound, that war hoop, woo, that they let loose, things started shattering. When was the last time you decided enough is enough? I'm letting out my war hoop. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, I command you to break. Yeah. Some of you just got freed in here in case you didn't know it. Not because I did it, not because I shouted. It's just how I was feeling led by the Spirit, but it was because of what God decided to do. So you know, so many times we get hung up on the man does it this way and that way. All I want to know, is it God? Did God do it? You know how many people I've seen come and get free service after service and then they leave the doors and they go pick up everything they had they left in here? I'm going to tell you, that's heartbreaking to a pastor. <clears throat> or they'll get the Holy Ghost on them in here but not him. And then they feel good till they get home. And it just runs off of them. Yes. Man, why not get it in you? Why not let's just have a, you, you know, it'd be great. Uh, you don't have to raise your hand. We got a whole bunch of people in here. We're a spirit-filled church. We got a whole bunch of members right now that are not even spirit-filled. But you don't hear me ever up here. It's the most I've ever said that, uh, you know, you got to use spirit at least to drag people to the altar. I, mean, I don't believe in all that stuff. But I want to encourage you, if you ain't got it, it's time to get it. Amen. I didn't say no word that I say. If you don't get it, you can't be here. We've had some people for a long time. I'm just saying, why, why would you not take the best gifts God has for you? So you can stop getting it on you, you can get it in you. Acts chapter 2, go read it sometime. Take our Bible course. Go watch some of the thousand videos I got out there on the Holy Ghost and all the teachings on it. I didn't leave nothing out. I don't have time this morning to teach you on all that, but it's there. 